Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do an OG sit down, chit chat, Q&A all about my life, my mental health, because I know life can get overwhelming sometimes and I am seriously so grateful for everything and everyone in my life, but there are definitely days where I just feel anxious and I thought it'd be not fun, but I know you guys really appreciate when I kind of open up about stuff like this. So I went on Instagram and I asked you guys to ask me questions about my life, my mental health, like just my experience. This is all stuff that I've experienced. This isn't going to be me like telling you what you need to do, but these are just things that have helped me or things that are on my mind right now. I'm really grateful to BetterHelp for being the sponsor of this video. I feel like it's very fitting. You guys know I've been in therapy for years now. I went to my first therapy appointment when I was in high school trying to figure out like my life because I was deciding where I was going to go to college. I was I felt like I had to please certain people in my life and that was kind of the first time I went to therapy and then I started going on a regular basis and it literally changed the game for me. Like if you haven't been to therapy, you are going to be obsessed because it's so nice to sit down and talk to someone who is there for you to listen to you. I'm a big people pleaser, so I'm constantly feeling like I need to ask them how they are and what's new with them. But with therapy, their number one goal is to sit there and listen to you and give you positive coping skills to kind of handle whatever you're going through and just to kind of, you know, inspire you in one way or another. So it's really nice that that person's not involved in my life at all. They're just there to listen and chat and I'm really, really grateful for therapy, seriously. For those of you who might not know, BetterHelp is an online platform that connects you with a licensed therapist and you can do your therapy on the phone, on a video call, messaging. They make it so easy for you and it's just so nice. You just fill out a brief questionnaire and they get you matched with a therapist and it's just so easy because I feel like one of the most daunting parts is like, oh, I, I don't even know where to start. How do I know this therapist is good? Like I'm just stressed. BetterHelp does all that for you. When they match you, they're matching you with a therapist who has helped other people with the same or similar struggles as you, so they're very experienced in that. You're usually matched within 48 hours, so you can also start chatting with them very quickly. So if you're feeling overwhelmed or you're just needing someone to talk to, or maybe you're going through a new life chapter, let BetterHelp connect you to a therapist who can support you. All from the comfort of your own home. That's probably my favorite part. I don't have to leave my apartment. I can literally do it from home. Head over to betterhelp.com slash Danielle Carolyn or choose my name when you sign up to get a special discount on your first month of BetterHelp. And remember, it's okay to ask for help. We're all in this together and BetterHelp is there for you and wants to match you with a therapist who can help you chat through whatever you're going through. Thank you again to BetterHelp for sponsoring the video and the amazing work they do to get therapy accessible to a lot of people. Someone said, how is going off birth control? So I stopped birth control like mid July and I'm really hoping that I'm gonna feel some like sort of amazing effect because a lot of people said they felt amazing when they went off. Um, I also don't know, I might be going back on. Right now I'm just off of it to test my hormones, but I just have to get it out of my system for a few months. The one thing I am noticing though is I'm definitely breaking out and I was warned that when I went off birth control that that may happen because it was regulating my hormones for so long. The first week or two, I felt so weird, so anxious. I was also going through a lot of life change. like. I was moving, I was traveling, so that definitely could be a part of it. But yeah, I definitely have been feeling blah recently. Like I am doing all these amazing things and I'm, I literally love my life right now and I love my apartment and I love all of that, but I just feel like, honestly, I've been feeling ugly. So I don't know if that has to do with it or anything, but my period's been normal, which was nice, like nothing crazy different. What do you personally do to handle your anxiety? So. I do a variety of things, but one of the things that has really helped me, or a couple things. One, I literally always have my essential oils with me. I have my Sage Wellness essential oils. It's like a breathe scent because sometimes I feel like when I can't take a deep breath or the worst is like, I feel like so many people that have anxiety understand this or just have this problem where 
you can't yawn. That is the worst feeling. And for the longest time, I thought I had a breathing problem. And then I went to the doctor and they were like, you have anxiety. I was like, oh. But having those essential oils, especially like I've had moments recently where I'm just in a very chaotic setting. I'll run to the bathroom or right there, wherever I am and take out my essential oil. And I just inhale it a few times. And I don't know why it just allows me to breathe without thinking as much about breathing. Cause I'm like, oh, this smells so nice. I'm relaxed. I'm in a spa. That really helps. Also randomly sparkling water when, these are all like random tangible things, but like if I'm feeling kind of just out of my body, very, very anxious, I, to ground myself, I'll drink something that's sparkling or fizzy and something about the sparkles going down my throat calms me down. I like feel it in my chest. I, Cause a lot of my anxiety comes from my chest. Like I feel it very heavily right here. Comment down below if any of you guys feel this way or if you try it and let me know. I don't know. That's another thing a huge thing is like if i'm in an anxious moment like the other day i was at dinner with my friends we were in london and i don't know why sometimes you don't know why your anxiety is happening like i was just feeling a panic attack coming on i was really hot i was just kind of like it would have been a long day like who knows but instead of like bottling it in and like trying to push it off i was like hey guys i'm feeling kind of anxious right now and my friends were literally the best. They were like, so how's Ryan? Like, what's he up to? Like, are you excited to see him when you get back? Just kind of distracting me from my anxious thoughts and just asking me other questions. And also talking about, oh, I'm so it sucks to feel anxious. I was feeling a little anxious earlier. Like just talking about it has really helped. I've been in multiple settings where I was like, oh my God, I'm literally about to have a panic attack. But then if I bring it up and like talk about it, it's like, okay, it's not all in my head anymore. I'm talking to my friends about it. They're acknowledging it. I am safe. I think the biggest thing for me when I'm feeling anxious or I'm panicky, it's like I feel unsafe or my fight or flight is going. So reminding myself that I'm safe, you're okay, you're literally fine, Danielle, it's all good. Like literally saying stuff like that to myself really helps. How do you balance friends, family, boyfriend, and have time for yourself? <laughs> I will give myself a pat on the back. I think I am so good at this. <laughs> I really pride myself in this. However, at times I feel like I'm a little too good at it where then I'm like, I don't know. Sometimes I'm just like, why am I thinking so much about it? But like in college, I had a roommate and I would pay attention to the amount of times I would like have Ryan sleep over or like the nights her and I would have because also I enjoy my time with her. So I wanted that time as well. I just also like the people in my life that I truly, truly care about, like I'm checking in with them. Like I, nothing pisses me off more than when people are like, I'm a bad texter. Like. No, you just don't want to text me then or like you don't want to call me because if it's the people that you love and care about in your life, like you will pick up that phone or the next time you're on your phone, you will see if they texted you. You will check like I have trouble with that and I understand like if you're working, something like that's different. Like if you're busy, that's different. I genuinely look at my week and I'm like, okay, like what nights can I hang out with Ryan? What nights do I want to like have a girl's night? What nights do I need to myself? Like tonight, I'm like, I need a moment to myself. Like I know I need that and I'm gonna set that boundary. It's all about setting boundaries and being able to say no to things. Like my friends have plans later this week and I was like, I, I'm i not busy, but I can't go. Like I just need time to myself so I can charge up for the weekend and hopefully see you guys this weekend. Danny, what do you think makes you a good friend? You have an amazing bunch of friends. Oh, that's so nice. I've gotten a few comments recently. Like I could tell you're a really good friend. And like, I don't know why that was like the best compliment ever. And it made my entire life. I think just because I am such an overthinker and a people pleaser, I not even that. I'm not even going to like my therapist always says, don't should on yourself. Like you should this should. No, I'm not going to should on myself. I think that I treat people the way I want to be treated. Isn't that like the golden rule we learned in like preschool? Like I put in that effort to my friends because I want them to do the same for me. And I genuinely care. I'm like, oh, I forgot Brooke was doing this. Let me ask her how that was or stuff like that. I just, it's top of mind. And the people in my life mean so much to me and they do so much for me and fill such a void in my life like i am just so grateful for the people in my life like they make me laugh they help me they uh, give the best advice we spend good times together so i think i just treat them the way i would want someone to treat me and i'm really grateful for that how have you been curating your new apartment to help support your wellness and mental health love this question that's like that tiktok oh i love this question as you can see my apartment is very neutral like could not be more neutral. Like I'm finally adding some darker features to it, but 
the most color I have in this apartment is the greenery. Like I have a couple plants and that is literally the only color. For everyone it's different and some people are like, you literally need more color in your apartment. It, I love color and I think it's lovely and I love staying at hotels with color and I love going to my friend's apartments that have color. For me, having a very serene space makes me feel so relaxed. Like when I'm going to bed, I just feel so cozy and nice. So when designing my apartment and buying the things, like I was looking at this like really crazy, fun, funky headboard. And then I was like, no, like I want simple, clean lines and everyone's different. And I'm gonna add a little bit more color in the walls, like artwork. But for me, I basically want my apartment to feel like a hotel spa. And those places are where I feel very relaxed. Um, so I definitely do that. I always have candles burning or something like that because the flame is very relaxing to look at. Like I'm thinking about all these things. Also with that, I try to keep everything out. Like I don't like to have a ton of things on my counter if I can. So I got like nightstands with storage. I organized everything in my bathroom. I have a dresser that's very sleek and can store everything. Like I like minimal stuff everywhere. I've been struggling with health anxiety recently and want to know how you deal with it. Health anxiety is, I feel like not talked about as much as like other, I don't wanna say types of anxiety, but I feel like a lot of people have like this mental anxiety of just like day-to-day -day things or something that they're going through. But health anxiety, I feel like I didn't even know was a thing because I thought it was just a me thing. And then I found a side of the internet that also deals with it and I felt very validated. If you don't know what health anxiety is, um, this is what my version is. I never had this growing up. It just developed in the last few years where if I get a heart palpitation or if I get like a weird bump on my arm, that's not as common. It's more like internal stuff. I'm like, oh my God, I, I'm having a heart attack. Oh my gosh, I have heart problems. And one thing that's helped me a lot is going to the doctor. And another thing that's like so messed up for me is that I also don't like going to the doctor. So the health anxiety and then not going to the doctor don't mesh because I feel like every time I go, like literally the other day, I went to the gynecologist. Every time I go to the gyno, they're so sweet, so kind. I leave with, you know, you're healthy, all is well. But for some reason, I just enter the doctor's office assuming doom, assuming they're gonna tell me something's wrong. And, and that's okay too. Sometimes there is something and they'll work through it. And that's what I remind myself is like, go to the doctor. Like I literally went to the cardiologist a few years ago because I thought I was having heart problems and they were like, no, it's just anxiety. Uh, they like did a whole sonogram and everything, but I felt so much better after that knowing like, okay, I can rest my brain a little bit. Now that's not to say that I still don't feel like that. Um, there'll be times I'm doing cardio workouts and I'm like, oh my gosh, my heart is beating faster than normal. I'm dying. No, I'm not. Like, and it's been really nice. Some people in my life, like my brother is so encouraging. Like I used to always do cardio and have no problem with it. And, but my brother's been really helpful. Like he was here recently and we went to go work out and he was like, look, look at my heart rate. Look how high that is. And that's normal. That's okay. I just went, I ran, I ran on the treadmill. That's okay. Um, honestly, stuff like that really does help me. Like, I, I don't know. So have I cured it? No, I don't know if I ever will, but just reminding myself that I'm healthy. Like I literally do affirmations every single morning. Like I am healthy, I am safe. I am going to live a long life, stuff like that. So I think a mixture of like, like I finally went to the doctor and I got like my whole blood panel done. Like every single thing you could test in your blood I've done. And there were a few things that were, like I talked about in a vlog when I was in the Hamptons, there were a few things that the markers were a little bit higher than average and did it freak me out? Yeah, but I'm like, you know what? I'm 25 years old. I'm so proud of myself for going to get that done. I'm so, I'm still so young that I can use those things, that knowledge to kind of go forward in my life and make better decisions based off of those levels, stuff like that. That's the best advice that I have. That's what I've been doing for myself. Would you say you're in a better place with your anxiety? Hashtag anxiety girlies. <laughs> I'd say so, yes. I feel like once a month for like a week, and this probably all has to do with my cycle and stuff too. I get like extra anxious and I just kind of expect that. It's usually right before my period starts, but I think I'm in a better place than I was a few years ago for sure. Like I just, I understand it more. I understand my body. I understand how my body reacts to certain things, like certain types of alcohol, everything like I just know myself a lot more but are there days where I'm like I just want to like go on a medication for anxiety yes 
and that is not bad either. But then there's other days where I feel really great and I, you know, I take my supplements, I take my magnesium, my ashwagandha, and I feel great. And now that I'm off birth control, I'm not on any medication, so I kind of like that. I feel privileged that I don't need to be, but I just kind of like that. So I don't know. I don't know. But I'd say I'm better than I was a few years ago. How do you not overthink your relationship? I, I am so upfront with Ryan. Like, I don't know if it's because my parents got a divorce and whatever, and that scares me, but I am so upfront with Ryan. Like if he does something that makes me upset or feel sad, like I tell him immediately, uh, poor guy. Um, but he takes it like a champ and he, I think he appreciates it too because the longer we've dated, the longer I've realized like he does not read my mind. Men cannot read minds as much as we want them to. You have to literally tell them. So I think I don't overthink because I know, I also just know Ryan and he has such a simple, good, loving heart that he never means anything with malintent. And he's such a good guy and literally everyone in my life loves him. I don't know, it's just a different situation. We've been dating for so long. Like I trust him at the back of my hand. Like I just feel so comfortable with him that there's not much to overthink and he doesn't make me feel uncomfortable. Like he doesn't gaslight me. Like I just, I know when he says something, he means it. So I don't overthink it. Where is the first place you go and what do you do to recharge your social battery? My apartment, my sanctuary. And if I'm not home and I'm traveling, honestly, like, like I said, like if I'm at a restaurant with friends or if I'm out at a bar or like if I'm out, like I'll go to the bathroom. Like I have a small bladder, so I like always have to pee. But a lot of times I will use the bathroom as a way for me to just have a, a moment alone and kind of ground myself. Or I will go for a walk and be along the water. If I'm near a body of water, like whether it's a pond, a, literally a fountain, a lake, an ocean, I'll take whatever. Being near water definitely really soothes me and kind of allows me to clear my brain a lot. I have a lot of questions about growing up, being a real adult. And honestly, that's something I'm having a lot of trouble with right now. Like you guys know, I am super nostalgic. I literally say I'm in my senior year of New York. Like I am just like that. I loved high school. I loved college and I love post-grad. Like I literally love my life so much. I love the people in my life. Like I can't say that enough. Ryan and I were hanging out the other day and I was like, growing up scares me. And he was like, I know. Like it's just, it's so crazy. Cause I feel like your whole life, like when you're younger, you dream of growing up. And I am just so happy to have my own big girl apartment and do this for my job. and get to travel and everything, but with growing up comes lots of different responsibilities. Your parents get older, people in your life, you know, come and go, people get sick. Like it's just a really scary thing. And I don't have the answer to that one. Growing up scares me. And um, I think it scares a lot of people. I think that's very normal. So I just try, like, I think there's a fine line between like pushing yourself but then also reminding yourself that you do still have so much time. Like I feel like so many of my friends that are my age just feel shitty that they don't maybe have a partner yet or you know, whatever chapter they are in their life. And then I think about literally, thank God for the show Sex in the City because those women are in their thirties, upper thirties, I think in the show. And like none of them even have partners yet. And for me, like you guys know, it's like sometimes I'm like, like people always ask like, why don't you and Ryan live together yet? And my answer is because we have the rest of our life too. And I, we both, we've talked about this so many times. Like, yes, it would be so fun to live together, but also we have so much time for that. And we hang out a lot anyways. And it's really fun to have our own space. And he has a roommate that he's always wanted to live with. And they have such fun like guide time that you don't get back. Like I just, but then I overthink it and like, oh my God, like, and we're like, no, like this is what we want and it's okay. We're 25 years old. All of my friends, most of my friends live in the city that are 25, live alone or with a roommate right now. They're not living with their partner at the moment. So I just, I don't know. Growing up is scary. I have friends that are getting married. I have all of you guys asking me if I'm getting married and I'm not getting married next year or the year after. I'm not getting engaged any, any, any time soon. And that is because of everything we say is like, also in New York, I feel like it's a little bit of an older age that people start like, no one here I know is really getting engaged. It's like a lot of my friends from college are, which is just so sweet. And I'm like loving going to the weddings, but I don't know, it's just not my timeline right now. It's not our timeline. Ryan and I have talked about it constantly. So yeah, 
I'm gonna end it there. I really enjoyed chit-chatting about life, mental health, relationships, and just everything in between. Um, thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video, and I will see you guys very soon for another vlog. Bye.